let's take the show on the road then. Thank you all for coming and welcome to Vertec for Caltech's presence in virtual worlds. Um, my name is George Rogowski. I'm a professor at Caltech and director of the Center for Data, Discover Data Driven Discovery. First establish my street cred with me, because I know some of you, but mostly not. Um, but 10 years ago, actually from 2008 to 2012, with a group of colleagues, we ran an experiment called Meta Institute for Computational Astrophysics, which was the first and perhaps maybe even the only so far professional scientific organization based in virtual worlds. And so we wanted to see what this technology can do for us, uh, including education, but also scientific collaboration and data visualization, which turned out to be very important. So back then, like many of the old timers involved in education, I thought, this is it. This is going to be such a transformative technology. And, you know, in a couple of years, everybody will have an avatar and this will be the normal way of doing things. Well, that's not how it happened. So even though we established to our satisfaction that uh, Second Life, even back then, was already a killer app for anything, including human interactions, such as public lectures, university classes, office hours, collaboration meetings, and so on, it didn't catch on. Um, so after 2012, I pretty much not really disappeared, but didn't spend much time in Second Life and started looking into it again recently. So, well, so the question is, why did it, did it not catch on? And there are many reasons for this. Back then, and maybe to some extent still, there was a great mental inertia about the uptake. This happens with all of the really modern data technologies, information technologies. And not much you can do about this. Then there are things like a really difficult Second Life interface, which unfortunately is not a lot better now than it used to be back then. And it's really bad in comparison to more modern user interfaces. And that precludes a lot of people from really sticking around. And then of course, Second Life, uh, acquired something of a reputation because, of course, that's what all of the reporters would write about, and all the weird stuff and porn and everything, and, and that kind of turned off a lot of people who never tried it, never knew what it's about. And I would say a lot of it has to do with really poor management at Linden Labs, where they really didn't know how to use the user talent and efforts properly and so on. And then since then, um, Graphics became increasingly obsolete compared to the state of the art user interface is really poor functionality. So, so I'm kind of surprised that it, Second Life isn't all that much better now than it was 10 years ago. Um, and that's a lot of time in internet years. So I looked what's around in terms of education. I've been to a few of the virtual world's best practices in education conferences. I see some of the same people I knew like back then. And I'd say it's a very seriously underused resource or platform, not just Second Life, but all virtual worlds in general. So what did happen is there is a lot of adult education by which I mean, you know, things like university extension, uh, people who have not finished their university degrees and now trying to learn more. And there's been a, lot, a great deal of that and some of you have actually been actively involved in it. Apparently there've been lots of kind of one-off experiments that somebody sets a class for real university students to do something and, and it works more or less. But usually it's just one time or maybe a couple of times and the students do not come back. And this is a very important point to which I will come back later. So as far as I can tell, there is still no stable permanent presence of any real university with real students, with real classes, getting real credits, et cetera, et cetera, 
There's only sporadic effort here and there, if that. Remember that in the heyday of Second Life, there were 350 university campuses in Second Life, and now there are some and they're empty. So um, why is this happening? Well, what's been happening in the last couple of years, few years, first of all, games got a lot better in terms of graphics and functionality and social acceptance and so on. And people are much more open to the idea of virtual interaction spaces, social media and everything else. And for the past few years, there was a great deal of hype with the advent of headsets for immersive and augmented virtual reality, extended reality. And that has passed the peak of the Gartner hype curve. Now, I think maybe slowly recovering. What happened in, in that arena is that of all of the VR, AR applications that require headsets, so basically moved to enterprise regime because it didn't really catch with the games. And then, of course, the pandemic happened. And that brought the urgency of any form of online education really to the forefront of many people. By the way, you do not have to persuade me that this is better than Zoom or any of the traditional flat screen technologies that people now use. I'm totally in favor of it. I'm just trying to understand why the world at, at large did not catch on. Well, one thing that we've been doing at Caltech with Santiago Lombeda, scientist who works with, who works with me in the Center for Data-Driven Discovery, is to start building virtual teaching spaces and especially virtual teaching labs and that's very much work in progress and has many aspects to it. And maybe someday Santiago should actually give a little seminar presentation about it. Um, but the idea here was that virtual teaching labs, if constructed well, can really fill the gap in online education. MOOCs have solved the problem of scalable content delivery. But MOOCs are missing two important pieces. One is the human interaction, student to student and student to instructor. To some extent, social media can help with that, and, and they do, but not very well. And by the way, I had office hours in Second Life when I was doing my first MOOCs, and a very small number of students showed up, but who did show up, it thought this was great. And one more thing is that, well, students can do these virtual labs whenever they want, and Caltech students like to do things at 2 a.m. and not get up in the morning. And also, you can do things that are impossible in real life. Uh, you know, it can shrink to the size of molecules, it can be bigger than galaxies, you can build nuclear reactors, if they melt down, they, nothing, nobody gets hurt, and so on. So this is something that we will continue pushing regardless of virtual. Okay, so let me tell you then about the Vertex project. After the pandemic hit, and I just saw how ill-prepared everybody was to really do proper educational experiences in, in, in education in general, um, I decided to take a good hard look at what's available out there, not just Second Life, but any virtual worlds, because I think because of the Pets has been too clunky and too expensive for most people. Virtual worlds, which are accessible through mostly every flat interface, would be the way to go for the next few years. So there are two parts to this. There is, of course, the educational uses, and we've been all talking at that for a long time. But I, I would say an even more important thing now are the social and psychological benefits for the students. Students are suffering from loneliness, from lack of social content, uh, and it's actually becoming a real problem, especially for the incoming classes. You have freshmen who are now normally before pandemic get into the strange new, new university world. They don't know anybody, they're left home. They make new friends, they make new social networks, they learn from the old students and so on, and now that's all gone. At Caltech, that's very visible, um, especially since our students tend to be more of a kind of nerdy types, and many of them are somewhere on the spectrum. 
And so these social benefits of having a community with whom to interact are really, really important. And we see this happening now. So I thought what we really need to do is provide a viable alternative to things like Discord and Zoom and whatnot for them to socialize and make new friends and, and just have a good time together and then work together and collaborate and so on. And eventually we can do the teaching as well. So that was the genesis of this. Um, we got some support from Caltech's Provost Innovation Education Fund, and I use some of my own discretionary research funds. We bought this item in July, we built stuff by October, roughly speaking. And then we got some of the students, Caltech and elsewhere, coming to tell us what's wrong, what we should do differently. I would say by and large, um, students were very positive, but they gave us some really useful advice, and I'll mention some of that in a moment. We also struck a collaboration with the Art Center College of Design, which is a small but excellent design school in Pasadena. As Santiago, who works with me, also works with them, and Professor Jenny Rodenhaus um, had a class that could really use this, so I thought this would be an interesting thing. We, we built this, so why don't we have that cohort of students as well. And then mixing with Caltech science and technology nerds, that would be an interesting experience too. Well, it didn't quite work out in terms of synchronizing things, but Art Center students have been here. They've been doing projects. You will see some of their work when we do the tour. And I think that's been an interesting experience overall. Um, Major reason, a major reason why we haven't seen many Caltech students so far is, well, they're busy. We give them an insane amount of work and they just don't have time. But the school will end in a week or so or less. And then I suspect that we'll start seeing more and more. Plus, I'm getting Caltech administration really interested in this because of this problem of psychological well-being and benefits uh, for students. And so I think we'll start seeing much more of a presence in December and certainly January. And maybe in winter, but certainly by spring, we'll start uh, this venue for some instructional work. Okay, so here we are. Uh, Vertec, and the name, by the way, is play on Caltech, because. Caltech is in California, and Vertec then is in virtual reality, um, is a place where it's standing now. So let me tell you more about this. Um, first of all, why did we come here? As you probably know, there are many virtual world wannabes out there, and most of them are, are really trash in terms of the quality of graphics and, and avatars and functionality and so on. Um, have you been to Verbella conference? I don't think I need to say anything else. Avatars in particular, I think are a real key to this uh, because of the Proteus effect. People identify with their avatars, they identify their friends with their friends' avatars, and that is what really brings the social and psychological benefit, the subjective sense of actual human presence. Other than that, you, know, you may as well be seen. So I took a good look at everything and basically due to just on the basis of quality of the graphics and avatars, it came down and functionality it came down to three choices, second life, Open Simulator and Science Space. Science Space is, if you don't know, built using the Unity engine, which is exactly the right thing to do. And it's built by some of the refugees from Linden Labs, and they know exactly what needs to be done. And that's what I was hoping to see for all these years, but it's still too early. Well, another factor was how much pre-existing 3D content is there and how easy it is to build stuff. And of course, Second Life wins there, hands down. OpenSim, being essentially derivative of Second Life, follows next. Science Space is going to be much better, I think, 
but right now it doesn't have all that much and it's more expensive. Speaking of cost, um, well, open simulator, of course, cost is more or less zero. Second life cost is low um, and science, time space is higher because they're a young company. And you know, if you want to hire developers, those are Unity developers and they command high salaries, right? This is not parameters. Security and privacy were a major concern for us. Um, and OpenSIM is good because you can completely control who, go, who can enter your world. Science space is probably going to be good. They're, they're definitely trying to make it work well. And in Second Life, well, it can be arranged through restricted access. So normally, the only people who can be on this sim are members of the Vertec group, which is members of the Caltech community and anybody else that we make an agreement with. Basically, professional education. Um, and that's it. You know, nobody else can come in. Um, well, not for these three hours, starting at 9 a.m. this morning and ending at 12 noon. The access is completely open. Um, and then after that, we'll go back to the closed access. Uh, and from the other side, um, access to the adult content on the part of our innocent young students, right. Um, that is something that we absolutely had to worry about. And so what we managed to get is this um, app produced by Linden Labs that lets you create your own avatars uh, through their database, but you can make them so that do not have even box to check to access adult sims. And that's exactly what we have. So students or anybody else in Caltech who, who goes to Caltech portal gets an avatar that can go to PG and moderate sims, but not adult. And that's pretty much what the only thing we can do. Now, of course, students will figure out in a nanosecond how to go around this, but avatars that the school issues to them cannot go to nasty places. All right, and now the most important factor I think, is what do the users want? In the startup world, this is the first question you ask. What do your customers actually want? Not what you think they should want. What do they really want? So here we're dealing with 18 to 22 year old cohort. They're mostly gamers, they're Minecraft generation, they're digital natives, and they have high modern expectations for graphics and interfaces and everything else. But here's an important one, which I think explains a lot of the previous failures to engage students. They want to have something else to do in addition to the school related activities. That was the crucial factor for us choosing Second Life because in Open Simulator, eh, there isn't much to do. Even with Hypergrid, there really isn't much to do. And in Science Space, well, they're still developing. And if you want to have more stuff, you have to pay for it and so on. So that was the single biggest factor for us to choose building this in Second Life with all of the precautions that I just mentioned to you. So, what can they do here? Um, we will go on tour and you will see things. Um, they can collaborate. We ask Caltech students, we encourage them to work together on homeworks and so on. They have to do exams of their own, but for homeworks and anything else, more interaction, the better. So we have these uh, digital whiteboards that are uh, actually Google Jamboards and students can doodle on them, interact and write them down and so on. And they have pleasant places to sit down and discuss whatever they want to discuss, whether it's school related or not. Um, and you'll see some of those. A lot of places for nice interactions here on the ground level. We built a little cafe with the board games and their bicycles that they can ride around and race. And I have to confess that every time I rode one of these bicycles, I, I fell off the cliff, but you know, who okay. cares? Um, and they can just hang out with friends and, and talk about whatever they want. And I hope that they will start groups like you know, Science Fiction fly, uh, Club, LGBT uh, Club, whatever they want to do. It's going to be it's for them to be their space. Okay. 
and I can just play and relax. No school. But, so the, an effort was made to build this ground level of the sim, like a really pleasant environment for them to relax and so on. I think one of the uh, mistakes that a lot of schools have made is try to replicate real life campus buildings and only that. And they look blocky and ugly and dull. And so here the idea is to have an attractive environment to get them in, to get them to enjoy themselves. And then we can worry about buildings and so on. So in fact, we do plan to have them uh, build Caltech buildings they want to build, just as a creative challenge. Caltech students like to you know, like their houses in which they live. There's a nice student center and you'll see a, a beginning of a replica of that and so on. But ground level here is intended as a pleasant, socializing, relaxing spot. All the building, building happens at platforms that are one, two, and three kilometers above the ground level, and we'll go to some of those. Um, so for example, Santiago, Lombeda, started building the actual replica of the real student center at Caltech called the Commitment Center. You notice that red gate thingy, that's because the place is called the Red Door Cafe. That's a traditional thing. And uh, Art Center students have been also looking into, into how to build virtual campuses and so on. Um, you will see some of their work uh, when we go to the higher platforms, but Professor Rodenhaus is giving them interesting things to do and Santiago is guiding them along this. And I think they're having reasonably good experience as well. Okay, so what do we do next? First of all, we expect that this will pick up with Caltech students for whom this was built. Um, and once this start happening, we will really appreciate any volunteers, people who know what to do, to meet the newbies at the arrival plaza, help them start. We provided as much written help and links as, as we can, but as you probably know, it, there is really no substitute for somebody holding your virtual hand and helping you for the first hour, tell, telling you what. So I will organize some kind of a sign up for this. And um, as I said, any time, as much time as you are willing to spend would be greatly appreciated. So we can talk about this later. If you're interested in volunteering, just send me a message and then we'll figure it out. And also, I think the experience with Art Center student was interesting and we'll be in principle open to um, collaborations with other institutions, other groups. If you have a class but you don't have a good venue, we can do it here. Um, if you want to have seminars or any other educational related activity, uh, just talk to me. Um, I think it'd be a good thing if we can have different groups of students interact with each other you know, get out of their bubbles, see what you know, other people are interested in and so on. So again, uh, at 12 noon today, the open access will close and only the members of the group can come in. But, you know, if we make an arrangement with proper group roles, like we did with the art center students and so that All right, so that's pretty much um, all I wanted to say for my introductory presentation. And now we'll go on a tour um, just to give you a quick orientation. This is, of course, bird's eye view. There are teleporters everywhere. Feel free to use them. You can explore on your own to your heart's content. Um, we're now on that thing on the right, the amphitheater. The center of the sim is the arrival plaza. It has two buildings, a main building, and you see it in a moment, and a cafe. On the southern side of the uh, island is a beach, and including a beach house that can be also a classroom, a conference room, and interaction spots. There is a nice waterfall on the northwestern side. And uh, also, there are some Easter eggs that I put in for students. I let them to dis let them discover. Also, we have two uh, sky boxes, which are male and female avatar changing rooms, uh, and there is a lot of good gifts there and you are really welcome to take 
any of those that you want, as long as they're just for your own use uh, and uh, not shared or God forbid sold anywhere else. But feel free to take everything you like. Okay, um, that's all I have to say. So any immediate questions, and then I'll start walking and you guys can come along. So I'll take questions in the local chat. How many students do we have? Well, it depends what you mean by this. Caltech has uh, approximately 900 undergraduate students and incoming classes like 250. Uh, we only had maybe a half dozen or 10 of them for beta testing. And, um, you know, I, I expect that we'll see certainly tens of them coming in at different times. Um, can I increase the capacity of the sim? In terms of the avatars, I think that's basically limited by the architecture of Second Life. If this is wildly successful, which I doubt, but it might happen. I'll just buy another island and tack it on. Um, in terms of the uh, land impact, we did buy an extension thanks to the art students who really want to go hog wild building stuff. And um, that's not an issue, but there is a limit as well. Um, what do I think about Cyber Lounge and 3D web worlds? Yeah, they're okay. But again, the quality of the avatars and functionality are just not there. And this factor of having other things to do, places to go, um, interesting new builds to see, games to play, well, that is all very important. And I don't think that any other virtual world can match Second Life in the available activities. I very much hope that Science Space will get there. I'm rooting for them. I think they're, they're doing the exact right things. They're just a little too early. And we need something like right now. So is this for all students at university? This is for any and all members of the Caltech community who want to do anything here they want. You know, it's, their, it's the virtual extension of the campus. And what kind of classes? Well, um, I don't know yet. I mean, I'll, I'll do office hours of my own classes, but you know, I'll introduce other faculty to it once I know that students are actually here. Uh, the most urgent need, I think, was to provide social psychological relief space for the students. They're under a very high stress situation. And of course, pandemic made everything much, much worse. Um, so let's see, do I keep rating G? I put it as M for now to be a little more you know, open-minded, but they, they know that all the rules that apply at Caltech campus, all the protections against harassment, all of that apply here as well. And of course, we will enforce them rigorously. If it turns out that we need to switch to G rating, we will. Um, so let's see. Uh, Do I need experienced builders? Um, I think we're okay for now. Um, and in fact, we do want to engage students in building their own. This is an opportunity for them to exercise their own creativity. Um, and we do have games uh, on, in the cafe, board games, and there is a, a volleyball court on the beach and they can race bicycles around and we'll add as much as needed. Um, so let's see. Uh, so. Yeah. Well, I kind of doubt that we have sex ed at Caltech, although I haven't looked. Um, but I suspect that this generation uh, does not need to be told anything in that department. Um, uh, Do we teach Unity 3D development? We don't. Uh, we hardly do any um, 
graphical design or art, their efforts to thanks in part to Santiago and Beta. Um, I'd be interested to find, see what uh, faculty in our humanities and social sciences can come up with, because of course you can do many interesting experiments as well. Um, I mean, this was a big thing in Second Life 10 years ago, and, and I think Prof Professor Bukowski at UC Irvine is doing that, Tom Bolster, Bukowski in Second Life, is doing classes and things in, in, in Second Life. Um, I mean, right now, I don't want to kind of put students off by actually giving them yet more schoolwork. I think I'd like them to like this place, to see it as their place, and then we can start getting them into educational issues. Um, simulations. Yes, the part of our virtual labs effort um, is related to this. And that's a long story because we want to do a multi-platform, fully interactive uh, system of virtual labs, but that will be probably for another talk. Um, let's see. Yes. Um, well, I don't honestly. I don't know what classes we have in psychology and so on. Caltech is a weird place. I sometimes say that that's the only school where class in mathematical finance counts as part of humanities. This is not a joke. This is true. Um, let's see. Um, well, I mean, we'll we'll respond to them. We want we'll listen to what they want, and maybe you know we can put public lectures. One of the things. I'm, thinking of doing is, which were very successful back in the Mika days, is to have public lectures, although these will be open only to the group members. And for example, Kip Thorne, who is a Nobel laureate because of gravitational waves, is our family friend and super nice guy and plan to ask him to give one of the first lectures here to the students. I bet that will go down really well. Um, I mean, we could have liberal arts, if, you know, art centers may decide that this is a really good collaborative spot um, for them. I'm totally open to explore any and all of these possibilities as they come along. Um, yeah, of course, I'll, I'll happy to keep Science Circle, as well as other major education, educator groups in Second Life, in fully informed of what we go, what goes on. I'm perfectly happy to get suggestions and advice. Uh, you know, there are many good minds who have been thinking about these things for a long time, and um, you know, just talk to me. Yeah, you know, I'll listen to any good ideas. Do we have calendar? No, we do not. Um, Eventually, of course, we probably will. Um, I may uh, well decide to parcel off just this amphitheater to have that openly accessible if we decide to have truly public lectures. But um, right now, this is a low priority item. Um, yes, if, the, if there are any interesting links, uh, do send them to me. Um, I collected a bunch of places and there is a note card giver on the, on the main plots are nice places for them to go to, but open to any and all good suggestions you may have. Um, although I suspect that students would not be interested in looking at more educational places, They're looking for places for gaming, whether it's quest-based games or role-playing games, or just cool places like um, Inspire Space. That, that was a cool spot, and I still like it. Um, so yeah, I'm open to any and all suggestions. Just send me note cards, and uh, we'll take a look. Um, 
Right. Oh, so if some of you actually are really working on this particular thing, like Eva, um, yes, um, something may be really interesting to do about that too. Um, so as I said, I'm open to any and all good ideas about collaborations having to do something with education and just well-being of students now. Um, okay, so... Right, well, Eva, there are many other people, some of whom are here, who have actually been involved in this very actively for so many years. And um, I think the best thing is to join those groups. I tried to attend some of the meetings as best as I could, but you know, truth be told, this is just a little side project for me. I, I have many other things I have to worry about and can't really always attend some of those. Well, shall we go for a little tour now? Um, I, I will walk over towards the main plaza, just tell you what's out there. And maybe we'll go to a couple other spots and then go to higher levels. But, you know, chances are you can probably just go and explore on your own um, and you'll be booted out at 12 noon. So uh, there, you, there you have it. Okay, off we go. huge amount of information on our website, which I realized I never told you about. So here is the URL. This is an easy one to remember. And when you go there, this is actually for our entire virtual reality lab. One of the options there is VirTech. And so you go there and there is plenty there to see and read and you know, do whatever you want. Um, I would also appreciate any good feedback you may have on the, about the information we put on the website, but it's intended to get people prepared to come here and then experience it on, on their own. Um, all right, so here we have two things. There is a cafe here, which is a poor substitute for the actual Red Door Cafe at Caltech. And yes, here are the board games uh, uh, that people can play or just sit there by the fireplace and enjoy themselves. Um, they can have their own real coffee in real life and then pretend they're doing it here. They can grab a bike from the rack here and then ride around. The main building, so to speak, at least for now, is this one over here. And we can come in. So this has first this comfy discussion place space here, you know, students to sit together and talk whatever they want. But also then on the other side, this is currently set as an interactive whiteboard, but I was really thinking of having a video screen so I can watch video lectures and, and comment on them or watch whatever they want. Um, and then in the back over here is like a little conference room. Well, I don't have to go there, but with, which also has an interactive uh, whiteboard 
And if you, I think if you click on it, you'll see some doodles that were already made. Um, right. So we have those all around and we can add more as we need to. Um, well, let's, um, let's go back. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I see now that we don't really have good capacity. And yes, we do have a Robo, Robo cats, which um, actually Caltech students do have their own cats. Uh, they're emotional support animals. Um, and I hope to actually find better Robo cats somewhere. But this is what I can find easily. Yeah, I cheated and I teleported here, leaving my guests stranded on the beach, but I suspect they'll be able to find their way back.
Well, they seem to be enjoying themselves on the beach, but let's see. Um, okay. All right, let's kind of mosey slowly. People probably catch up as we move along. Um, the oak here is meant to represent so-called Engelmann oak, which was one of the iconic things on Caltech campus. And it was judged to be about 400 years old. And then in 2015, it got a fungal infection and had to be cut down. But it's well remembered. And I thought the interesting thing was that, well, obviously it started its life right around the time when Galileo was making his discoveries and then died in the year when LIGO detected gravitational waves. But so here it lives in virtual reality. Um, okay, uh, let's walk through the forest to a fire circle, which I think is a pleasant hangout. But, um, I mean, isn't this a nice spot to just sit down and bullshit with your friends about whatever you want, right? And of course you can drop down to the beach if you really want to. But um, if we walk then uh, north through the forest we'll, or rather north, northeast we'll get then uh, towards the waterfall area which i think is another very pleasant and relaxing spot Well, I personally love the sound of flowing water. And so for me, this is like a really nice spot to sit down and relax and then mess with my inventory or whatever. Um, yeah, that's one new thing in Second Life relative to what we had before is all this mesh 3D content. Um, and it's wonderful. You know, some you know, real professionally done and just buy it. You don't have to build stuff. And so a lot of stuff you see, including some of the ground you're walking on, is all mesh creations. Um, let's go back towards the center of the sim and then start teleporting to the upper levels. Um, but, uh, you know, if you think that uh, this is boring, feel free to just explore around on your own. Uh, but let's go there and I'll get onto the first level, which is where um, we have sandbox and some builds. So I'll say start teleporting to level one. Um, 
the sandbox and we'll catch up over there. This level is intended to be essentially a sandbox for Caltech students to build stuff. Uh, what you see here is a beginning of a replica of Caltech Student Center, the Hamitman, uh, which Santiago built. Um, Santiago, I don't know if you wanted to say a few words about it. Uh, sure. Uh, can you hear me? George, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure my microphone's working. Uh. Oh, okay. At least, yeah, that will be here. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Um, so the idea here was to start exploring what uh, what students would want to do. Uh, so. There's this two concepts. First of all, when people see something familiar, that helps them feel bonded. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do here is create something that looks a little bit like a like commitment and commitment. If you see the, some of the pictures that George was showing before is very blocky. So it very made, made it very easy to do it just out of, out of plain prints. Uh, but the other idea was to make it uh, a little like explode it, take off the roof, uh, start exploring what these spaces could become other than just standard you know, we don't want to do a standard coffee shop. We don't want to do a standard auditorium. Just what it means to start creating interesting spaces that could be scripted. Uh, so for, I don't know if you see in the inside, there's like a little green area with some blocks inside the building. Uh, that's actually a project that we're doing with some of the students to actually connect it to a running simulation. So we can actually run it like a real live game. And the cool thing about that simulation is that it's running uh, on a server using Rust and can communicate uh, hopefully with Second Life soon but it also communicates with a plain web browser uh, doing Babylon, as well as a full virtual reality uh, in Unity. Uh, so it's, it's basically just starting with exploration of basic things that, that um, appeal to, to the students that look like something familiar, but it's not overwhelming and it's not blocky, it's not, sorry, it's not too constricted, uh, but it just kind of starts opening the imagination as to what could be done. And I think that's kind of the whole exploration that we're doing both at these upper levels, as well as the stuff that uh, that uh, that we're doing with Art Center, where we're doing a class on whole um, uh, virtual campuses. Yes, uh, 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 Student Center Deconstructed, that's a great way to put it. <laughs> so, um, you know, so one of the things that we have for us is if, if, you, if you fly up here, um, I don't know if you see me where I am. Uh, this area up here is actually a full in in real life is a is a brand new auditorium they built for the for the Caltech uh, Orchestra. Um, so uh, so the idea was again to start. What does it mean to actually create a space where where people can collaborate and and, and listen to music together? Um, uh, and so we're just exploring all those different visual elements 
and placing them in, in this well. And from this plot, you can see there's a pond over there uh, towards uh, the north side or east side. Um, that is a, 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 that's a play on a DNA fountain that actually is a Caltech. And in the distance, you can see an auditorium um, mm -hmm. that actually uh, has some videos. And that's, again, that's almost like two or three buildings kind of mashed together, you know, roof blown off, and all built with very basic prims uh, with the whole idea of, of kind of creating these modern collaborative spaces. And the idea is that once the students come here, they'll start adding to it and, and creating new things. And and just um, I, I, uh, the professor that I teach the class uh, with Art Center has this concept of, you know, there's lots of silly things in, in, in Second Life. Uh, you know, the fact that you can be any avatar that you want, the, bug, the fact that the social space, you know, you can butt up against somebody and you feel a little awkward, but also you feel like, okay, this is silly. There's no reason to feel awkward. That whole silliness, just embracing that silliness and opening it up and saying, okay, let's do things here that, that try everything. So so that's kind of, this is kind of the beginning of stuff. And uh, and we're hoping, I think there's a giant elephant towards the end and the cannon as well. Those are, uh, the cannon is, is a basic element that actually is in Caltech campus that, you know, MIT keeps on stealing every other summer. Uh, there's a whole story behind that. So that's why the cannon's over there. And the elephant's actually one of the symbols for one of the houses. Caltech, I mean, Caltech houses are the equivalent. But yeah, there you go. Uh, thank you, Santiago. I suggest that we now go on to the second level where creations of the art center students can be seen. Uh, the, the teleporter is in the middle of the uh, platform, but I'll go and put down a few more to ease the traffic. So uh, for the eight of us here, uh, I'll say this once and I'll repeat it again uh, once the people come back. Um, so um, Caltech is like the number one school sometimes in the world, um, but uh, at least uh, uh, tech, you know, we're always up there with MIT and Harvard competing for number one spot. An art center is similar, is, is like the number one or number two college in, in art and design in the country. Um, so. The one thing that we have in common between Caltech and Art Center, uh, being an engineering school and being a design school, is all the machines that we use. Uh, we use band saws and, and we have all these shops to actually build stuff. Um, so as part of the exploration that we had for, for virtual campuses, uh, we started uh, looking at what would what is the one thing that would be useful to actually that has a, collabor a collaborative between both places. Um, so um, so, the, so one of the things I did, for instance, is this project that you see right in front of us are actually this idea of the machines that you would see at a machine shop kind of blown up, you know, a hundred times in size. And, and, and what would it mean to actually create, uh, uh, you know, social spaces within this, you know, giant machines and also have the ability to actually learn how to use these machines. And especially for students who have not come into campus yet, you know, freshmen, for starting at Caltech and Art Center. Um, this is a way to actually be introduced to these spaces, uh, be able to stand next to somebody and say, hey, what does this machine do? How does it work? Uh, also learning about the machines themselves. 
Um, so, uh, so I encourage you to just fly around the space. It it, it is gorgeous. It's uh, we're two weeks away from from our finals, uh, so oh, they're getting really close to actually finishing up. So this is still work in progress. Um, and if you have any any questions, just 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 holler. Um, uh, and uh, by the way, there's at least uh, uh, two or three students from Art Center here among us. Um, so if you have any questions, we can we can also answer them for you. So again, for those who who, who just joined us, um, the one thing that Caltech and Art Center have in common is that between an engineering school and a design school is that there's lots of machine shops where you can actually get to build your 3D printers, bandsaws, all sorts of fun equipment. Uh, so the idea is, uh, was as we explore this idea of virtual campuses, you know, how, how can we create a space uh, that actually lets you start feeling like you're in the machine shop, feeling like you can start kind of learning about these machines, and at the same time as, as embrace the whole social aspect of Second Life. So maybe we can start walking towards that one. So uh, there was the question whether th this machine was scripted. Um, the machine is is not scripted yet. Uh, for now, it's all just a sign based. How you actually start, uh, you know, looking at each of the machines would would be yes. And again, uh, there's just one machine right now that has the fully the, the full space. Uh, uh, you do in the machine. Uh, so you can see this is already the base for it for one of these giant machines and we have already kind of like a welcome space right here at the bottom um, you have samples of the machines themselves here uh, you see uh, they're exploring also what it means to one of the big things in in, all, in both the machine shops at caltech and art center are the safety equipment you know goggles uh, so they're actually we're actually encouraging we're actually giving out these goggles that people can wear we haven't come to the whole distribution thing we're trying to make it easier for people to wear these things. Um, but, um, you know, uh, but then if you come back out here, um, so you can see this moment, the machines at small scale out there, uh, but then up here, you can actually start traveling. If you jump up and start flying, you can start getting a feeling for how large this machine is. Uh, here you can actually see, actually explaining what each of the different parts, uh, they're actually color coded. Uh, so if this if this if the sign has a color, you can see the part of the machine that actually does that thing. Um, you know, Art Center is all about communication, connecting art. Uh, so just even the sign themselves and how we display those signs, how we make these designs useful and and beautiful in some ways, just aesthetic and communi communicative. That's all things that are that we're exploring throughout these classes. Uh, so so the class itself is just a big learning mechanism. And we get to produce things that hopefully uh, uh, the students can learn and, and take, take, take with them as they become designers and go into the real world, uh, but also kind of start exploring what Second Life can do um, and, 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 and keep on growing and actually start tapping into, 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 into you know, virtual spaces and how we can learn and communicate with each other. Oh, uh, yes, so uh, somebody mentioned a racetrack. Uh, so we have about five projects going in, 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 in our class. Uh, they're grouped between one, two, and three. Uh, so this one project that we have right here is the machine space, because that's one thing that we have common between Art Center and Caltech. Well, the other thing that we have common between Art Center and Caltech is actually both hackathons and, and car design. You know, uh, Art Center by far is the number one school in automotive design in the world. Um, so, and then Caltech has, you know, all these, uh, all, all these self-driving machines. We've won many, many, you know, of the, of the DARPA races. Uh, so one of the things that we had is one of the students actually creating a hackathon where he just gives you a block and a script, and then it's up to you to start creating your driving car and tweaking it and changing it. Um, so that's the racetrack that you see. Uh, I think he took off of all the signs on, on, on the beginning how to teach people how to, how to script. So that's part of it. How do you teach through signs and by looking at things, how to, how to, how to, how to start to start doing the communication and, and the scripting. Um, but you see the kind of the beginning of, of, of the stuff. So I think I had a question.
Yeah, and um, another, um, I don't know, uh, so if you start, uh, if you come all the way to the top, um, uh, this bridge right here is actually, uh, the, it looks very much like the main building at Art Center. It's it's done by, a, a, I want to say Geary, but it's not Geary. Uh, but it's 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 a it's a one of the most world famous architects whose name escapes me right now. Maybe one of my students can help me out by typing it in the in the chat. Uh, but you know this bridge is is one of the main attractions of of this amazing uh, gorgeous campus that we have on the hillside at Art Center. So again, this idea of exploding the arts, the the the, the student center, exploding the building and mashing them with something else. So this is a machine that also has a piece of real Art Center in it. Uh, so the idea is, yes, people can learn. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Craig Elwood, the Elwood building, of course I should know. <laughs> the room I teach is, in, is, is Elwood one to one. Um, so, uh, but, uh, ooh, we used to have a giant spear that said our center right here. Um, so the idea is that, you know, people can come here, they can learn, but hopefully they'll just start finding places to hang out. And, 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 and even the idea of the Instagram generation, you know, the idea of taking a selfie, there's plenty of selfie spots out here. Um, so, um, so there you go. So maybe we should just head over to the third level, but I think people can just go ahead and you know, explore on their own at this point. I'll be at the third level if anybody wants to ask some questions. We have some cool nanotechnology stuff happening up there. You're welcome. So, so they're exploring this kind of highway system that we could drive through. And the whole experiencing of creating a car, driving through this highway system uh, is actually very engaging. And there's lots of amazing things you can do, everything from signage uh, to just the driving mechanism to seeing things and the views as you drive around. Uh, that's uh, that's very American, but it's also just, uh, just uh, it can be quite fun. Um, and then if you follow me all the way to the end of this black structure, um, uh, one of the other things that, that we're also doing, the, that also is in common between Caltech and Art Center is materials. Uh, there's, there's material properties, uh, there's, there's people exploring how to use materials. 
and the, the idea of nanomaterials. So these are this uh, this idea of 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 how do you understand nanoscale and second life can be a great thing to do it. Um, uh, if any of you know how to change your your environment, changing it to midnight actually works a little better. Uh, but this is kind of the entrance to a possible uh, exhibit on nano on nanoscale technology. Um, so again, the idea is that you can create these structures at a very extremely small scale, uh, and you can start see, you can start kind of seeing this uh, this uh, these structures right here. So obviously, you wouldn't see. A, 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 a the real scale so this is you know one that's 1000 one that's a million times blown up in scale and the idea is that they're extremely light in weight but extremely strong uh and it's extreme extremely they can they can support lots of weight uh, so as, as you travel into the actual uh space uh then they're they're they're, they're we're, we're exploring these nano structures uh both in a way to understanding and also kind of as, as, as art pieces and sculptures. Uh, so this idea of these things can can just kind of balance, have great balance. You have you have a nanostructure right on top there, a dandelion kind of representing how lightweight it is. Um, and then you have a nanostructure uh, uh, holding up just this uh, uh, gigantic rock. Again, just to simplify how extremely strong they are. Uh, so this is the kind of thing that 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 we are really encouraged by uh, the ability to think of everything that that we have in in real in real life, and how to not translate it directly into physical representations inside in three D representations inside inside Second Life, but really kind of start exploring what it means to understand and 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 represent this in in, in more in more uh, almost metaphorical ways to understand these things. And I think this is both useful for Art center as well as engineers from Caltech. Uh, so this is kind of the beginning of that exhibit, and then the, there's uh, you know uh, the we we eventually we had one of these structures you can actually fly through, but it was a little too large in number of prims, so it's been taking away for this tour, but it'll come back soon, uh, and then just other stuff. <laughs> yeah, gift shop would be fine. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, so uh, a nanomaterial. So again, so a nanomaterial is is a structure that you build at the atomic level. So you you're actually putting extremely small molecules and atoms together to actually build physical structures. Uh, so uh, if you look for nanotechnology at Caltech, uh, you you'll see uh, there's some very cool tech talks, uh, and you can build you know everything from from cloth to 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 hard materials. That are extremely strong, but extremely lightweight. Uh, so, uh, so I don't. I'm not sure how much in production the materials are yet. Uh, but yes, there, there's something that uh, that both Caltech and Art Center are looking into from different aspects. And I think that's that's. So again, this is work in progress. We're we're we're, we're inching towards the end of, of our term. This is one term's worth of work. Uh, there's there's a couple other projects that are at different levels floating around. Uh, but yes, uh, feel free to explore the 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 first floor of 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 of, of Vertec, the second floor, or the third floor. No, uh, note that you can always go directly to the address bar. We are we are at elevation three thousand. Uh, if you go to elevation two thousand, you go to the other place that had the virtual. Uh, the virtual uh, uh, art, uh, the virtual student center, and if you go around fifty, don't go all the way to zero. Then you can also jump directly to the to the first floor. So we're at zero, uh, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand. Cool. So if, if there's no other questions, I'll, I'll probably head back to the uh, to the to to the second floor to level one thousand. Oh, oh.
but they, my students have taken off. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, head off to uh, to the second one, and feel free to to jump on the. Call. Thank you.